Hi, Smart Home Sunday. My name's Paul. Welcome to this, the conclusion. Video number three, Nord Pool Data. I'm going to show you what it looks like in InfluxDB on Home Assistant. This will take about two minutes. This was meant to be a mini tutorial all squashed into five minutes, but it wasn't possible to fit it all in. So go and find the playlist if you've just come to this video and wondering what I'm talking about. There is a playlist called Nord Pool Data, and that will step you through on how you can go and download the data for free, all the Nord Pool spot price data for free and then video number two you can use a spreadsheet in notepad plus plus to conform that data into a format that InfluxDB likes very much and now I'm going to show you that it actually works if it doesn't work well then I have to delete that no it works so in home assistant I go down to InfluxDB I'm going to go to the InfluxDB admin create a database and give it a fun name like, ooh, that's not very imaginative, but electricity. Great. Now, if we remember the file, here we go. This is the data file. And you'll see these tags come up in a moment in InfluxDB. So those tags will make sense. So back here, we go up to explore. Now, we're going to write data. I'm going to pick what database I want to import the data into. I want to import it into the electricity database. The data is in second precision. Don't forget that. Now just go and grab the file. There it is. Open. Click. Write. And it's done. Now you might go here and it looks empty, but you need to create a query. So let's do that. Uh, I'll pick the database. Now you start to see the tags come up. So electricity, spot price. And then in here, currency, source, unit. If we go back and look at the file, currency, source, unit. So let's just pick source. And then the option is Nord pool. And now over here, fields, value. We've already got some data. <laughs> look at that, it's there. Okay, what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of cleanup here. So what I would recommend is we could uh, just adjust a couple of items. Uh, let's just go and take, well, actually, that doesn't really matter. Let's just take a value there. But what I do want to do is group by one hour. So the data is every hour. So it makes sense for the query to be grouped by hour. Now, the next thing I would like to do is let's go and change the visualization. There's a better setting here. We could try, yeah, the step plot, that, that'll work well. Step plot is good. Uh, quite often by default, it'll say line, but line's a bit confusing. Step plot, that's what we want. And now, if we go and have a look at some of this data, let's zoom in here and have a look. There we go. So now when I mouse over, you start to see that at 5 a.m., 31.02, then at 6, 53.1, and you can see it starting to, and then here at 8 o'clock, ooh, nice, became quite expensive. Now, you might remember uh, a while back, I did attempt this kind of thing, and I imported the data in my local time zone. That was a mistake. If I do want to see the original data in the UTC format, well, you could just click the button. Now there it is. Ta-da! But now by clicking local, it updates the time zone. And so now the data is exactly the same, but it's just aligned on the scale that makes more sense for me when I'm looking at what my six o'clock is. Um, that's it. I mean, of course, you can create dashboards and do a whole bunch of queries, but that'll come at another time. So this was it, the conclusion to getting your data, the Nordpool data, downloaded, manipulated, and installed. So really, this was just the thumbs up. It works. I'm happy. It's great. Hope you've enjoyed this. Give it a like. If you want more mini tutorials, then let me know. And of course, one way you can definitely tell me that you'd like more mini mini tutorials, mini tutorials, is to hit the subscribe button, and I will see you again next time if you do that. I do have something else you could watch. Uh, this this thing here. 
Bye.